So I know last episode I may have said that we were going to be lifting up Tahiti today. Um... All right, so towards the end of last year, I noticed that the AC performance in uh, Tahiti here, it's kind of been going downhill at idle. Um, I've owned this thing for like two and a half years now, and it's always been fine. I never had any complaints, but yeah, recently sitting in the car, sitting in traffic, the temperature, it usually it'll sit around 210. I don't really see it go up, but the AC performance at idle, it's freaking terrible. And the faster I go, you know, once I start moving, I get on the highway, it'll really start to cool better. And um, basically the clutch fan needs to be replaced. You know, it's got 240,000 miles on it. I'm pretty sure it's the original clutch. So um, instead of, you know, putting a new fan clutch on, we might as well do the electric fan conversion now. Now, aside from, you know, fixing what's broken, there are other benefits to this. Uh, for one thing, you're gonna clear up quite a bit of space in your engine bay, and you guys know we are gonna be boosting Tahiti down the road, and I do need that extra engine space, so getting rid of, you know, the clutch fan, the whole, you know, uh, cowl uh, assembly, it's gonna make a huge difference in space. Not only that, it's, it is gonna, you know, free up a little bit of power, a little more throttle response. I don't know if you're gonna feel it in the seat of your pants, but we are gonna be testing that towards the end of the video. Now, if you don't own one of these and you just wanna see the results of that comparison, I'm gonna put a bunch of chapters down below so you can skip towards the end. But let me give you guys a little rundown on the fans I grab, then we'll head over to the garage and uh, we'll start getting to work. So you guys probably remember a while back when I was scouring junkyards for parts, I came across these electric fans. Now these are factory fans uh, for these trucks and SUVs. These in particular came out of an 05 or an 06 Tahoe, I believe. I got them with the pigtails. Unfortunately, I don't have a harness. Now I paid 15, 20 bucks for these. I tested them, they work. An aftermarket harness is about $100, $150. So I'm not gonna go buy a nice fancy aftermarket harness for a $15 set of fans. Now the best solution is gonna be to get the factory harness that works with these fans. So if you're going to a junkyard, you see these um, in a truck, most likely it's gonna still have the relay center and the harness going to it. So I definitely recommend pulling all this stuff together. You're gonna get it for dirt cheap. It's gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of money and uh, you could get them wired up pretty easily. For me, I didn't get the harness with it. I can't find any locally that I could buy used. My only option is either paying 100, 150 bucks for an aftermarket, or I could build my own. So we got everything removed, um, five, maybe 10 minutes of work. Fan zipped right off. I had to remove the air intake as well as um, just disconnect the hose from the upper shroud. And then everything pretty much came right out. If you never removed your fan before, it might be on there pretty tight. I definitely recommend picking up one of these and not dropping one of these um, fan clutch tools. I rented one of these back when I did the water pump not too long ago. I ended up buying my own this time. Got this off of eBay, I think it was like 50, 60 bucks. I'm gonna link it down below. A couple of things you need to know. Depending on the size of the radiator in your vehicle, um, there are two different sizes. I believe there's a 28 and then there's a larger one, which is a 34 inch. If you have the smaller radiator, these E-fans aren't gonna fit. 
the good news is you can go out and get the larger 34 inch like my Tahoe here has, and that's a direct drop-in fit. So once you have the uh, you know appropriate size radiator, the fans will fit in there without an issue. The upper portion of the shroud is bolted to the uh, top core support here with two 10 millimeter headed bolts. The bottom one actually just slips into two tabs on the radiator and uh, the E-fans are gonna use those exact same tabs. So literally this should be just a drop in deal. We zip the bolts back in that we had for the uh, upper shroud and we should be good and ready to wire this thing up. That was the simplest fan install I think I've ever done. Literally everything lines up how it did with the shroud. So we have the, uh, the hole for the upper radiator hose, the clip holes there, that just popped right in. We have the uh, little steam vent line coming off the throttle body here. That clips into a little spot on the E-fans. And um, the holes to screw the E-fans to the core support, they're already here. You'll notice there were actually um, two smaller ones on the inside. So the old bolts wouldn't actually go back in because uh, the fan shroud holes are smaller than the existing holes for the um, E-fans. So I had to go to the hardware store, get a couple of metric bolts to screw in there. I'll put the size on the screen for you guys. All right, so fair warning, this portion of the video is about to get extremely boring if you don't care about wiring diagrams, schematics, or if you were actually able to grab the uh, OEM harness with your fans from the junkyard, you essentially have a plug and play deal or if you went and uh, picked up an aftermarket harness, also you essentially have a plug and play deal. But for any of you guys who um, either couldn't get your hands on a factory harness, forgot like me, or um, you don't wanna spend the 100, 120, 140, 150 bucks for an aftermarket harness, this portion of the video is gonna be for you. For everybody else, if you just wanna skip ahead to uh, the little wiring montage and then see how I'm gonna get them to work with the computer, I'm gonna put a little chapter down below, so just skip over to that and you can uh, bypass the kind of boring stuff. All right, so before I get to the diagram, I just want to uh, run through you know, the function of a relay and you know the purpose of it. Electrical guys, you know what I'm talking about here, but I just wanna go through this. It's gonna be a lot easier to kind of explain the diagram. So uh, all you really need to know, all the relay does, it's using a, um, low current circuit to control you know a high current circuit so once the relay is activated all it's doing is taking two wires and it's just connecting them it doesn't matter if it's power or ground um, you know you can use a relay to flow battery power through it you can use it just to flow uh, you know chassis ground through it it doesn't matter as long as you give um, two of these pins pin 86 and pin 85 power or you know ignition voltage or battery voltage and uh, pin 85 ground that's going to trigger the relay and it's gonna flow um, current from pin 30 out to pin 87. So right here is just a basic wiring diagram for that relay. Right here, I have it wired up for our fan. So we have battery power going to pin 30. The positive wire going to our fan is gonna go on pin 87. We have uh, 12 volts from our ignition key. I normally would take, I would tap this terminal into like the wire here. So it's gonna always have constant power and then the relay isn't gonna actually turn on until it gets ground. So you could put a rocker switch here, flick it on, it'll move this over, you know, activate it, flow it through. Or in the case of these fans, we're gonna hook the, uh, the PCM up to pin 85. So once the, the temperature comes up to temp, it's gonna engage, uh, it's gonna put ground on this. Remember, we already have power here, so it's gonna just boop, flick it over and send power straight to our fans. So what I have right here is the um, stock wiring diagram for these GMT 800, um, you know, trucks and SUVs. To my knowledge, this is the same, whether it's a Silverado, a Yukon, an Escalade, this is how the factory, you know, the 05, the 06 electric fans are wired up. And this is how I'm gonna be wiring up Tahiti today. So I went ahead and kind of color coded this stuff and labeled it just to make it a little easier to explain. And uh, basically we're just gonna have high speed and low speed controlled by the PCM. Like I just mentioned with those relays, um, the PCM is going to ground 
the high speed and low speed relays and turn the fans on. So coming up here, we're gonna have constant, you know, battery voltage coming straight through. You see it splits off and it goes to three different relays. We've got relay one, relay two, relay three. On the left here, these are the control sides of the relay. So remember pin 86 and 85, it's the same on all of these. So once this is grounded then this has power, the relay is gonna activate it. And uh, yeah, that's the same for all of them. But if you see on the middle here, this uh, wire right here, it's wired to 87A. These two normally open, that's going through 87A. So this wire, this relay is gonna be two in two jobs basically. But yeah, we have our power coming in. As you can see, like I mentioned with branching off from pin 30 to 86, we have power for our load on pin 30. And then we also have the power tapped off of that on 86. And that's the same for that. So these guys are ready to go. Once they see ground, they're gonna turn on. Really in the middle here, it's getting constant power straight to pin 86. So what's gonna happen is the computer is gonna monitor coolant temperature. When it's time to turn the fans on, it's gonna ground our low speed wire right here. And you're gonna see that's gonna come over ground fan relay one. We have our, you know, constant battery power on 86. So this guy's ready to go. It's gonna flip over. It's gonna send that power straight from the battery through to our left cooling fan. But as you'll see, it doesn't go straight to ground. The wire, the ground side actually continues on. And this is a low speed circuit. So it's gonna continue on up to fan relay three. Remember, we're wired on 87A. So this fan, this relay isn't activated yet. That, uh, that ground for that fan or you know the voltage coming out of that fan, it's going to go straight through fan relay three. It's gonna continue on. It's gonna to go to the positive side of the right fan. Then it's gonna finally find ground. So what this is doing is uh, giving each of these fans six volts. They're wired in series with each other. And that's gonna give you know low speed fan function. They're both being controlled um, you know, through these two relays. This one isn't activated yet, so it's just flowing straight through to uh, the right fan. But uh, moving over to the high speed control, on pin 33, same thing. You, if you turn the air condition on, or I think if the engine gets hot enough and it really needs those high speed fans, it's going to, you know, ground this as well. But once uh, pin 33 is grounded, so you turn the AC on or something, the ground is gonna come up, it's gonna split. You're gonna see, we're gonna go to uh, fan relay three, and it's gonna go up to fan relay two. So simultaneously, these guys are gonna get ground. Once again, they already have you know power on 86 and 30, so they're all ready to go. This is gonna flick over. It's going to send uh, battery power straight down to our right cooling fan, and it's gonna immediately find ground. So this is wired uh, you know, alone. It's no longer in series to left cooling fan. So it's gonna be getting the full you know, 12, 12.6 volts and that's gonna be high speed for the right fan. Now, uh, once again, it splits off here. So what's gonna happen is, as it grounds uh, fan relay two, it's gonna also finally activate our, you know, previously dormant fan relay three. That's going to cut the, the flow, you know, what I mean from the left fan that was wiring this in series. That's gonna cut away from here, and it's gonna send our ground which was before going down to the right fan for them to be wired in series. It's just gonna move this over and allow that left fan to go straight to ground. And that's gonna give the left fan high speed. And that's all there is to it. It looks a little confusing, but it, once you break it down, you kind of go through you know, one section at a time. It, it's very, very basic. Um, if you have a 2002 down, you're going to have pin 33 already occupied. So what I mean by that, on the O3s and up, if you look at pin 33 at the PCM, there's gonna be no wire there, but on the O2s and down, you're gonna have a wire. And what that actually does, it goes to the recirculation door because from what I understand, um, on the O2s and down, they put the AC recirc uh, control through the PCM. So if the, uh, you know, the engine gets too hot and the AC pressure starts going up and you have recirculation on, or you have recirculation off, in an attempt to try to you know, lessen the load on the air conditioning, it's going to uh, turn the recirculation on, therefore allowing you know, the, the cooler air inside the cabin to flow over the evaporator, therefore not um, you know, lessen the load on the AC system. So that's why the O2s and down, you're gonna have that wire taken up. So all you can actually do is cut that wire or de-pin it 
and just set it aside, you know, just wrap it in the harness, leave it there in, every, in case you want to put it back. And then you'll just put your own pin in there and wire it exactly how this is to the, um, the relay for the high speed fan. It doesn't seem like it's a real big deal. However, there is another option. If you want, you can wire the high speeds into the AC compressor as a signal to, you know, have the fans come on when you turn the AC on, at least for the high speed. And the way you're gonna do that is with another relay. So like I mentioned earlier, explaining the, how the relay works, um, you'll just use the relay to flow ground. So you'll see 85 here, we're gonna give that chassis ground along with 30. So this is gonna always have ground. And once this is activated, it's just gonna flow a ground through it. So what we're gonna do is take 12 volts. Well, we're gonna take the signal wire, the wire going to the AC compressor. So when you turn the AC on, you know, the compressor is gonna get 12 volts. We'll just take that wire or we'll tap into that wire and uh, run it to 86 on here. So once the compressor is turned on, it's gonna send 12 volts to 86. We're already grounded here. That's gonna activate the relay. And then it's gonna send a ground out of uh, pin 87. So what that's gonna do is if you don't wanna you know, do what I just mentioned or have the PCM control the fans, you'll just go ahead and uh, connect this wire here that will go to pin uh, 33 to that 87 terminal on this relay. If you want them to work as OEM, and that's what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna wire this into the PCM and we're gonna flash the PCM to control this 100% stock. Um, even if you're an O2 and down, like I said, you could just take that recirculation wire off and just wire it the exact same way and it'll, it'll work exactly like an O3 or wrong. That's how I would recommend doing it. So that's how these are wired up from the factory. That's how I'm gonna wire Tahiti up. And the main reason I didn't want to go out and uh, spend the hundred bucks or so for an aftermarket harness is because of expansion. I went to Amazon, I picked up this relay center for $30. It houses six relays, six fuses, and uh, I'm gonna use this not only to control the fan, so we're gonna have the three fan relays in here, I'm gonna have three more spots for expansion down the road if I want to add a light bar, um, if I want to add any kind of accessories, I booster later on, I need to add a fuel pump. I'm gonna have the room to add some extra relays. It's all nice and like uh, gasketed, weather tight. And it actually comes with the relays. I don't know how good they're gonna be because there's literally $30 for this entire thing with six relays, with six fuses, and all the little crimps that you need to wire it up. But uh, that's my plan. And let's get to work on the harness. All right, so the relay center is finished. I have this wired 100% like the factory wiring diagram. For any of you guys who may have skipped ahead past the boring, yeah, this is the factory diagram for uh, these trucks, SUVs with the electric fans. And I wire this up exactly like this. We have the three relays actually laid out the same way, relay two, three, 
and uh, relay one. Only thing I got to do here, I got to change these fuses out. I only had 35 amps and uh, the kit only came with two 35 amps, but the fans themselves use 40s. And the center relay here does use a 10. So all this is wired how it's supposed to be. But the way I uh, pretty much color coded this was just so it's a little bit easier when I'm putting this together, I know where everything's gonna go. Our two yellow wires here, these are gonna be our ground triggers that's gonna turn the fans on. So these are gonna be wired into the PCM a little bit later. Um, the three here, these are the power wires coming into each fuse. So each relay has its own dedicated power wire. And I just ran three individual ones because I didn't have a thick enough wire. And I'm gonna put three separate terminals on here and I'm just gonna connect them straight to uh, constant battery voltage right at the fuse box here. The fans themselves, the left fan is gonna get two of these blue wires. One is a left fan positive, one's a negative. Right fan is gonna get only positive from the uh, relay block. And the ground for the right fan is just gonna go straight to chassis. This last wire here is gonna go straight to chassis ground. Once again, how the factory intended according to that wiring diagram. And uh, yeah, all that's really left to do is just make these connections to the car and we should have electric fans. Well, after we flash the PCM, of course. All right, so I've been using this wire that I got off of Amazon, just like every great purchase I have a problem with. And um, it was listed as 12 gauge wire and externally it is a match. Actually the, the Amazon wire, it's a little bit thicker than the factory fan wire. And of course it was listed as 12 gauge. I've had this sitting around for a while. I didn't buy it specifically for this video, but yeah, I figured that's what I was gonna use. And I didn't really notice until now. Well, the only thing I noticed is that the factory wire here, it's got like a thick strand and this wire's got a thin strand, but hey, they're both 12 gauge. You would assume you just have more strands of the 12 gauge um, of the, you know, the Amazon wire than you would of the factory wire. But no, that is not the case because if we take a little look-see here at a cross section of the factory wire, that's what that looks like. And then here's the Amazon wire. So externally, this one's a little bit thicker, but it's basically just fluffed up with insulation. It's not a true 12 gauge wire. This is a substantial difference here. Like that's that is just ridiculous. All right, so it's the next day. I got everything taken care of. I ended up just swapping out the uh, off-branded janky 12 gauge wire. Well, not so much 12 gauge wire for this 10 gauge I had left over when I did the fuel pump in my Camaro. This is a little overkill, but it's all I had on hand and it's actually um, gasoline and oil resistant. I got this at Lowe's. I'm pretty sure it's meant, well, it's definitely meant for like inside of a house, but it worked perfectly for the Camaro and it's going to do just fine with the fans here. And I got all the wires ran, loomed up, looks really clean. Only thing I didn't really change out were the wires for the ground control to the PCM. They're low current anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I just swapped the wires going to the fans and the main power coming off the fuse box to the auxiliary fuse box for the fans. Other thing I did was make the connection at the main fuse box for the power going to the fan fuse box. And that's pretty much it. Last thing I'm gonna do right now is just make the connections at the fans and then we're gonna crack into the PCM and I'll show you how we're gonna wire it up. All right guys, so our connections are made. All that's left to do is hook up the battery and um, we're gonna ground these wires and see if they turn on. Because after this, all we gotta do is pin the PCM for them 
and I'm going to have to, you know, flash a little tune over so the computer can control them. I'll get to that in a minute, but right now this is the initial test of, uh, you know, the high and low speeds. So let's start out with uh, grounding the low speed here. Both fans are on. Both are pulling air, so I didn't reverse the polarities. Now, say you turn your air conditioner on, high speed. Oh yeah. So all the wiring is pretty much done. Fans are working as the factory intended, with the exception of the ground triggers. As I mentioned, five, 10, six, 700 times, we're gonna be tying these into the PCM. Now, it's not as simple as just plugging these into the pins where they belong and having your fans work. Unfortunately, you do need to go into the computer, make the changes and tell the car that it has electric fans now and set the temperatures. Otherwise, this, even though they're tied into the computer, the computer is actually not gonna do anything until it's told that the fans are there. You do have a couple of alternatives. For one thing, you could just tie these two together, hook them up to a rocker switch, hook that to ground, you flick the switch, fans come on. Very kind of rudimentary way to do it, but if you have an off-road vehicle, maybe like a race truck and you don't drive it on the street, that's gonna be the cheapest way to do it. Um, another thing you do is get a fan switch. So like my Trans Am here, it used a, uh, a grounding fan switch because the fan control wasn't through the computer you know, the temperature gets to a certain point, that switch is gonna close a ground and you can wire your low speed up to that. Good thing about these LS motors, being the heads are interchangeable, the coolant sensor that goes to the PCM on the driver's side, there's an identical hole in the head on the passenger side, but in the rear, and it just has a plug in it. So you could take that plug out. They do make LS style sensors, like uh, grounding fan switches that can screw into that. You would just hook low speed to one terminal, the other one to ground. The uh, switch sees the coolant temp, whatever it's set at, whatever, you could get like 190, 210 different temperatures, and it's gonna ground this wire when it gets to that point. So that is an option where it doesn't require tuning. And then for the high speed, you would just wire it the same way as the, um, the pre 03s So you would just tap into the AC compressor wire, run that to a relay, and then have the relay ground this wire when the AC comes on. So that's a way you could do it. I don't have any experience with those fan switches in these motors, so just, to you know, warn you guys, I'm gonna link a few down below that I find on Google, but I really don't have any experience with using them in LS motors, so I don't know how accurate they're gonna be and if they're gonna turn on at the exact temperature they're supposed to. So just uh, you know, tread with caution and look into what you're buying before you actually go for it. The best option and the one that I would personally go with if I didn't have the software is to bring it to a tuner, have them just go in there and make the change. My friends over at Tune Time Performance, for any of you guys that are in the New Jersey area, they're located in Lakewood, New Jersey. They're gonna offer you 10% off a flash for this. So just when you get there, um, you know, have everything wired up pretty much like I have it now, have it uh, tied into the PCM, which I am gonna show you how to do in a second. And then they'll go in there, they'll, uh, get into your computer, they'll make the changes, set the fan temperatures, and they'll have them working 100% in like stock. You don't gotta worry about switches or, you know, thermal fan switches, none of that. So our computer is right under this cover here. We're just going to pop this off. I did already disconnect the ground again from the battery. And if memory serves me right, we have a couple of quarter inch headed bolts holding the connectors to the PCM. Actually, I think they're seven millimeters. The quarter inch is the, the firewall connector on the Trans Am, is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, this seven millimeter. All right, both our connectors are off. So taking a quick look at the wiring diagram, we'll start with the low speed. That's going to be, you see C1 here which is the blue connector. So our low speed is gonna be on the blue connector and then our high speed is gonna be 33, uh, pin number 33 on the green connector. Pull these guys out of here. one that's all right so I don't know if you could see that but 
pin 42 is right here. We got 41, 42, 43, 44, and then it goes up from there. So I'm going to take a pick and I'm going to poke through this little bit of gasket here. This, uh, you know, this seal, because we need to get our wire through there. And then we need to pull the lock, this blue piece off, because that's going to allow us to slip our pin through. All right. So here are our pins. There's 42. That is the second one from the end. You can see we got nothing there. So these are the pins you're gonna need for these LS PCMs. I got a bunch of these off of eBay for like 10 bucks or something. And I'm just going to, uh, you know, take a couple of these, one for high speed, one for low. I'm gonna crimp a wire on, probably give it a tiny bit of solder. And then we're just gonna clip it in there and we gotta tie it to our two yellow wires. We're gonna go right through the back. She's coming through, let me just give her a little push here. All right, we're clicked in place. That's our low speed. Let's do the same with number 33 on our uh, green connector. Same thing. Push her through, a little bit of help. So I have HP tuners plugged into uh, Tahiti here. Let's turn the key on. Oh, it's crushing me. And all we're gonna do here is flash over a modified tune file. So if we go into system here, this is the settings that I'm gonna be using here to actually get the fans to work. So if I go ahead and open up the stock tune file, this I just ripped off of the, uh, you know, Tahiti's computer here. This is how the clutch fans wired up. Well, not wired up. You'll see fan type, no fans. All the numbers are just maxed out. It doesn't do anything. So that's why when you once you hook everything up, the fans actually aren't going to work until you go in here and change this. So the changes have already been made on this file here. And these are, to my knowledge, I found these online. These are the stock fan settings for these. Uh, you'll see fan type. We now have it on two fans. All the temperature settings. So low speed will come on at 196. Turn off at 189. Uh, the second fan will come on to the you know high speed will come on 205. Turn off 197. And then all the settings for the AC need to be in there. So the AC, it's actually going to the the second fan. Well, the high speed isn't going to come on unless the AC load is high enough. So it's going to be really efficient. It's going to work 100% like stock. So you'll see, you know, the the pressure has to be. 310 like a really hot day on the high side to get that second fan the the high speed to actually turn on and You'll see the fans for the AC will turn off at 45 miles per hour and all this stuff has been entered If you need to use these settings go right ahead. That's what I'm putting in here We go over to AC the only thing we need to change here is the type fitted so on the clutch fan setup with the untouched tune this was on not fitted so you want to put that on analog the TPMS, you know, that'll turn the clutch off once you get to 98%. This was at 100, I changed it to 98 uh, throttle. The last thing now for you pre-03 guys, remember what I said about pin 33 being the, um, the recirculation wire? Well, you can see here, there's a setting to change that. So recirculation fitted, this is the O2 and down guys. Yours is gonna be on AC recirc, so it's gonna control that. So if you cut that wire away from the recirc and you wanna have the uh, you know the computer control the fans, you'll just come in here and you'll change that to fan two, and that's gonna change what that pin 33 actually does. Now, before we actually go ahead and start her up, I'm gonna come in here to the VCM scanner part of HP tuners. We're gonna to connect to Tahiti, and we can actually come in here and turn the fans on to test them. So we'll go over here. We'll go over to system. We're gonna go over to fans. So here we go, this is gonna be low speed. I hear the fans. High speed. It's 
So there we go. I wired up the PCM correctly. See our wiring is nice and tucked away. All the covers are back on. I tied up the fan wiring down there. We'll come in here, we'll turn this off. And that's it. So let's start her up, get her up to temp and see if they come on on their own. Well, she's not exactly warm, so let's start with the air conditioning. Oh yeah, they're on, they're on low speed, but they're both on. Oh yeah, AC is blowing nice and cold, finally. All right, so we already know they're working. At least we can engage them, so they're definitely wired correctly. So uh, let's pull her out of here. We'll go for a drive, get her up to temp, and we'll see how the actual, uh, you know, where the temperature sits and how the actual cooling performance is. All right, guys, I didn't make it very far. She, she's getting hot, 220, 225. Um, I just turned around, I'm going back to the garage. From what I could tell, the fans are no longer running. I can't turn them on or off with the laptop anymore. So I don't know if a fuse blew or something went wrong. All right, so I caused the problem. Because I wired the main power feed to this post here, I figured this was just a direct you know, run to the battery so it would be able to handle it. Um, unfortunately, you could see that fuse is blown. And if we take a look, Stud, 30 amps max. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is move those wires. Hopefully I don't have to extend them. I'm just gonna move them down to here, the main battery stud that comes off the, you know, the positive. All right, so I got the fuse swapped out. I switched the wires over. I've been driving around for a good half hour now. These things are working incredible. Air conditioning, you come to a stop, it's still blowing ice cold. The temperature, it has not gone over 210. It, the gauge is literally functioning and reading exactly how it did with the clutch fan. I wouldn't even know that this thing had electric fans on it if I didn't install it myself. Noise, I don't hear anything. The AC is on, so they are running at high speed. If you get out of the car, you can hear them, but as for in here, you don't hear them over the blow motor or anything. And uh, before we get to the zero to 60, I just wanted to mention that LSX Matte hats are now available on my website. I'm gonna put a link to the, uh, the description down. I'm gonna put a link to the website down in the description. Um, I got them available in flex fit and snapback. If you've got a big head like me, I definitely recommend grabbing the snapback one. And I also have uh, Tahiti stickers available. This is a very small selection right now. I'm gonna work on getting t-shirts and, you know, cool, you know, Tahoe design, stuff like that. But for now, you can grab the hats if you wanna grab a little sticker um, of OG Tahiti back when I was doing the detailing when we found the questionable red stains and broken glass in the back. Um, that, yeah, well, the link's gonna be down in the description. But right now, let's uh, go find a place to do the zero to 60. We're going to, First do a run with E-fans, and I'm gonna pull over. I have this guy back here. Yes, this does actually fit with the E-fans installed. So I'm just gonna throw that back on. We're gonna do a couple of runs with the fan on there, and then we'll compare the times and see if it, we can you know, measure any noticeable difference between having just the E-fans um, or the clutch fan. All right, guys, so unfortunately, I can't find a spot that's gonna allow me to do a full zero to 60. So instead, um, I'm gonna do a zero to 50. I'm gonna end up doing this four times. I'm gonna do twice with the electric fans, then I'm gonna put the clutch fan on, we'll do two more times and compare them. Um, to do this, I'm just gonna use my Draggy. It's a GPS you know, data recorder. I use this a lot with my Camaro, if you see any of my track videos. And uh, yeah, let's just connect here. I have a custom parameter set for zero to 50. Air conditioner is going to be off for both runs or for all four runs. I'm doing nothing crazy here. I'm just going to put my foot to the floor, take off. You know, it's not going to spin or anything. We're all set. We're ready to go. So once I start moving, it's automatically going to start timing me here. And we're off.
50. All right, what do we got here? Zero to 50, 7.87 seconds with the E-Fan. So let's go ahead. We're gonna hit that one more time. All right, one, two, three. Fifty. 7.63 seconds. All right, I got the clutch fan on there. I went ahead and I pulled the fuses out of the electric fans just so we don't have any extra draw on the alternator that might, you know, make the uh, clutch fan look worse than it actually is. I do this quick because I don't know how well it's gonna cool with the E-fans on there with no shroud. And yeah, you know, this, this might actually be, you know, it's not gonna be perfect because there's no cowl on there. Obviously you have a cowl, it's gonna suck more, uh, it's gonna be forced to suck the air through the radiator fin, so it's gonna create more of a drag now, which is blowing air around. So I don't know, you know, how accurate it's gonna be as if I have the shroud on there, but. I hear the fan. And 50. All right, temp still right on 210. Remember the E-fan fuses are out, so the E-fans aren't working anymore. Okay, three, two, one. Fifty. All right, consistent. Let's uh, get back home, take a look at the results. All right guys, so here are the results. First two runs, zero to 50 with the E-fans, we had a 7.87. Second run was a 7.63. Then we popped on the clutch fan and we ran an 8.29. So it was slower on the zero to 50 as well as the zero to 30. Second run, an 8.3 and also a 4.09. So it is measurably slower with the clutch fan installed. All right, so it's time for my final thoughts on the electric fan conversion. 10 out of 10, man. These things work absolutely perfectly. Coming in here, you'll see we're uh, completely out of gas. Those zero to 50 runs just completely used all my gas up but temperature has not gone over 210 this entire time. It's sitting exactly where it was with the clutch fan. Sound level, you know, you could kind of hear them. AC's on right now, they're definitely on full speed. Inside the car, you can't really hear anything though. I'm really happy with this shoes box. Perfect spot for it. I was a little concerned about putting it, you know, by the cowl here and if the water is gonna cause an issue, but it has really nice gaskets on it, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I did move those wires down to, um, you know, that battery pose. I just need to notch this so I can close that back up. But um, yeah, no more problems with the fuse blowing. They're working perfectly as they should. And now I am curious to see uh, how the miles per gallon are gonna increase because I mean, if it's noticeably, uh, at least measurably faster, it's definitely gonna free up, I'd hope maybe like a mile per gallon or two. I don't know, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm also gonna keep you guys in the loop as far as the towing situation goes when I finally do tow with the fans if the temperature still sits at 210, if it gets hot or whatever. But as always, I'm gonna link everything I used in the video down in the description, the little fuse box. For the fans, definitely go to a junkyard. You're gonna save a lot of money if you could grab them. They're in uh, 05 and 06. Um, you know, Tahoe's, Suburbans, Escalades, Silverados, I think Sierras, all those trucks, uh, those are the ones to look for. If they still have the fans, chances are they still have the harness, so definitely grab that. And, uh, you know, aside from the tuning aspect, you could just do the fan swap for easily um, under a hundred bucks, even if you had to make the harness yourself like I did, then you just got to decide. You want to pay to have somebody flash the computer and have them work like stock like I did, or if you want to wire them into the, um, the AC 
clutch, have a high speed turn on that way, and then wire the um, the low speed to like a fan switch or something. I'm gonna link some fan switches I find online down below as well. And in regards to the tuning, once again, if you are in the Lakewood, New Jersey area, or you know anywhere close to that, I definitely check out Tune Time Performance. I'm gonna link their website down below. I uh, just mention my name, they'll give you a little deal. They could go in there, flash uh, the PCM for you. Hell, if you want to tune, they can even do that for you. And um, yeah, you guys saw, I put the clutch fan back on with the E-fans in there. So you could get everything wired up, tied into the PCM, just spin the fan on there without the, um, the shroud. It was cooling just fine. Drive down there, have them you know, do what they need to do with the PCM. Then you could just zip the fan off and drive home. That's actually pretty cool. That still fits in there, so you can actually do that. But next episode, the build will continue. I don't know what we're going to be doing. I want to say we're going to be doing the leveling kit. I don't know yet. I got to see if I could get the stuff in time and decide what route I want to do. I'm, this headliner's kind of been bothering me, so I wouldn't you know, be surprised if I decide to tackle that next. But yeah, the build is going to continue. I got to go get some gas. Um, I'll see you in a few.